Well, well hello what and you? welcome to the Guest Your News, and uh, we're on location for the first time in a long time. That's right. We're, we, we, we ventured away. We ventured away. At the Hill River Festival, and the stage is behind us. They're mic checking, and we're about to begin the um, Festival Jam for the night. That's right. I'm feeling whimsical and artsy. So am I. about you? I'm going to buy some whimsical art all weekend. And a cheesecake on a stick. Cheesecake on a stick, some homemade ice cream. I can't. It's right I'm over ready. there. It's I'm in salivating. the same place every year. I can't wait. I'm salivating in a Nathan's hot dog. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh. Well, anyway. Well, hello. And welcome to your old news update. I'm Izzy Fitz. And I'm Bud Driscoll. Topping the headlines from yesteryear. June 14, 1935. A stiff reprimand for boys in South Salina followed a slingshot injury to Betsy Lou Baker. At 12.10 Thursday afternoon, the boys were rounded up and taken to police headquarters where they were told what to do and what to not to do, what not to do in wielding their slingshots. Another Must have been one. good shots. Uh, yes. June 15, 1935, the trial of Eva Downs and Henry Sands on a charge of operating a resort where persons are permitted to drinking intoxicating liquor. feel like I've been drinking intoxicating <laughs> liquor. That's Open later. That's yeah. later. Open for a city court jury at 9 o'clock this morning and was still in progress early this afternoon. The alleged resort is the 40s Liar Club on East Pacific. What makes you think they're going to tell the truth? Well, Being from the 40 Liars Club. Yeah, I, I guess so. <laughs> And then, they better swear them in twice. Well, if you say the secret word, Jack Daniels, they'll let you in free. Yeah, they might. They you might. There's a breeze behind us? Yes. Well, anyway, back, broke the wind. Back, yeah, back to June 15, 1910. At the, outcome, at the outcome of the shooting scrape in Salina Sunday night, Mrs. Sally McLean, her daughter Abby Hudson, Jesse Pratt, and one of the men who was wounded, one of the men who was wounded, yes, and Dick Williams were arrested by the marshal this morning, charged with disturbing the peace. All of them were at or near the McLean house when the shooting occurred. John McCullough, the one who did the shooting, is still at large. And Joe Thomas... Check one, check two, box two. Excuse me, we're getting interruptions here. It's all right. That's a okay. Patience, patience, patience is a bit. That's the, the... Doing the outside, you know, on location. That's some of the things you got to put up with there, bud. You have to deal with the elements. That's right. Okay, now to continue... Okay, he's, he's being quieter now. Oh, nope, no. not anymore. <laughs> okay, all of them were near the McLean house when the shooting occurred. John McCullough, the one who did the shooting, is still at large. And Joe Thomas, the man who was shot through the lung, is, said, is still in a fair way to recover, although he is bleeding to some extent. Hard to breathe when you're shot through the lung. Yeah, well, you need to put some Band-Aids on that. Yep. Then. June 15, 1910. The journal is in need of two carrier boys at once. One route has 120 papers and the other 80. The boys will need a bicycle or a horse. Horse makes a lot more sense. Makes a lot more horse sense to have a horse. Yeah, it does. June 17, 1910. Since the hot weather has begun, the prisoners in the city calaboose, I think they mean jail, Probably. have begun to realize that Salina has a kind-hearted marshal after all. While the marshal is not particularly busy, he spends his time at the upstairs window of the city hall squirting water from a hose on top of the metal roof of the city jail to cool it off and make things comfortable for the prisoners. The only fault which might be found with the marshal's action is that he will make things so comfortable for the lawbreakers that they will be satisfied to remain locked up. You know, I wish the marshal was around right now. I could use some of Yeah, I could use a little mist. Hey, 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 check, check. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey, hey, hey. He's not very creative with his mic check. No, he could have think of something else to say. Hey, hey, hey. Check, check, check. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, check, check. It's, it's kind of musical, though. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Okay, it's going to take a break. June 20th, 1910, H.D. Lee, J.F. Merrill, H.C. Rash, and Mr. Lee's chauffeur arrived in Salina Saturday afternoon in Mr. Lee's new seven-passenger Packard automobile, which he has just purchased. It is the largest machine which has been owned by a Salina man and is one of the finest ever seen here. I want, he got all that. He bought that car from selling blue jeans. I Can know. you believe it? And I'm, I'm, I have a pair, too. 
Read more about the way things used to be in Monday's Salina Journal. And have a fun time at the Smoky Hill River Festival. And we'll see you yesterday.